My name is Melinda Bird, and um, I was born Melinda Purcell, and I was born in the year that my grandparents got involved with making Rhea rugs. Um, so I was pretty much born into a Rhea rug family. Rhea rugs are hand-knotted rugs that originated in Scandinavia. For a while in the United States, they were really popular, but possibly due to the fact that the supplies have become harder and harder to find, people aren't making rugs like they used to. So I'm hoping to revive this dying art by sharing what I know about Rhea rug making. The, the earliest Rhea rugs that I'm aware of date back into the 1400s. And um, the, the, way, the way that I know that they're from that age is they're knotted actually with the date, like 1498 across the bottom of the rug. In the 1800s and 1900s, um, young women who were uh, aspiring to get married would start by making a Rhea rug that would be part of their wedding ceremony. The husband and wife would stand on the rug as they're making their vows, and then this rug also is inverted, pile side down on their wedding bed. And if you live in a cold climate, it's ideal to have a warmth on top of you. The heat that rises from your body just nestles in the air spaces beneath the pile, and you can sleep under the snow under a rear rug. In the 1950s, a huge industry was begun of weaving rear rug backings in various sizes and colors and different types of weaves and selling the yarn and design so people could make their own rugs. My grandparents started to bring this tradition to the United States. They were asked to be the sole distributors in the United States for the Berga company in Sweden. And they, they were on the national news at one point. My grandmother was 64 at the time. She hired her neighbors to help her, so they had a little cottage industry where they showed catalogs and the people would choose a design and they would supply all the materials. This really did take off in the 1950s and 1960s, and in the 70s is when, um, when less expensive crafts became more available, like latch hooking, and that drew a a lot of attention away from Rhea rug making because people didn't really know the difference. If they hadn't seen and felt a Rhea rug, they had no idea the quality of it. There's actually a sheep breed called the Rhea, and it has very durable, resilient wool, a long fleece. It, it, it's not soft. It's not a, a fleece that you would want to have a sweater made from because it would be itchy, but it, it is very, very insulative and it doesn't compress, and that, that's another big problem. If you weren't using good rug yarn, you'd have a compression issue and it would not be an attractive rug. In designing a rear rug, the first thing I do is I need an inspiration. Right now, this inspiration is sort of tree of life, and tree of life is a, a theme that did go back to the earliest Scandinavian rear rugs, and I just love the thought of tree of life. So in this design, I'm bringing from the bottom of the rug colors that will go through the trunk of the tree and come out in various ways through the branches. Just in my mind, it's like the experiences in our life and how we assimilate what we know and what we do in all the different branches in life. I'm going to try to present that in color where it will look something like a tree, but it will be a design that where colors are kind of pathed through channels in life. I start with just doodling a sketch, a pencil sketch, and once I see that it's going to work, I'll take a paintbrush and watercolor paint and uh, paint it, usually right on the graph paper, because I'm going to use a graph to keep me in line. The alternative would be to draw it onto the backing, but that can get messy. And for my last rear rug, I want it clean and I want to make it very intentional throughout, even though I will ad-lib a lot. So I choose the colors 
where I want them to be and I gather the pieces of yarn and they blend to make a single color even if they're multiple colors of yarn and from that grouping of color I can place them on my graph and I know that when I go to knot the rug and put those colors on the backing that the image will just develop as the image that I want to show. To make a rear rug knot, first I take my skein and I untwist the skein. It's got about a hundred yards, about three and a half ounces of wool, and when I untwist it, it makes a big loop, and then I take scissors and I cut the loop at one point. What that will do is actually make 76 strands all of the same length, and that's really convenient if all of your strands are the same length, if you're going to be putting them on a needle. So I put three strands on a needle and they can be all three the same color, two of one color and one of a different color, or all three different colors. To make the knot, I part the row, there's a gap in the weft. The weft is what goes left and right on the weaving. If I make a little space, I can see the, the linen, which is the warp, and the knot is made on two of the linen warp fibers. So between those two, I put my needle in to the backing and like lift it up around the left warp fiber. Make a loop around the top, put it back in under the, the one on the right, and pull it down. And that basically makes the turkey knot. If I just leave my hand there and make another knot the same way on the very next linen fiber, make the knot and pull it down. Holding the loop, I get the length that I want, and that's a personal choice, and for me it's about an inch and a half and I just continue across the row, knot after knot. And on this particular rug, I'm going to be changing colors a lot. So I'm going to be dropping one needle and picking up another needle, and dropping another needle and picking up another, which will look complicated, but it's really just a matter of hop scotching along the, the backing. And then you can get a nice run going when you've got a solid color going for a ways. And you can move pretty fast. I can make about 150 knots in an hour on an easy design. So I can usually move along. When you reach the end of the row, you might think you have to cut or tie off. But remember, every single knot is a knot in itself, and each one is tied on. So when I finish making my row, I take my scissors and I cut each loop. Historically, the intention was to have all the pile be exactly the same length. A ruler was used so that you could wrap the, the loop around a ruler and then make your knot and wrap it around a ruler again. And really what that does is it makes every loop exactly the same length. Somehow in the 1960s it changed where a natural pile is what was desirable. And this is what I like and I've never gone with the straightness. So instead of cutting a straight edge like bangs, I put the scissors in and I cut one way. I put my scissors in the next one and I cut it a different way. And all through the cutting process I'm turning my scissors and it gives it a natural shag where one row blends in with the other and you see no evidence of the rows when you're done. Now, there was a time in, in history when the loops traditionally were not cut, but they found that as women were starting to wear spike high heel shoes, they would walk across a rug with loops and, well, you can imagine. One really good thing about a nice virgin wool is it actually cleans very easily. It, wool has lanolin in it and lanolin repels dirt. So one of the nicest things about cleaning a rear rug is the easiest way to clean it, to get dirt out of it, is to take it out in the snow, the first snowy day, and just throw it in the snow and walk on it, beat on it, and little crystals of snow that happen to cling to the dirt will just grab the dirt and pull it right off. So every year in our house, usually the first snowstorm, I'll take every single rear rug outside, whether they're hanging on the wall or laying on the floor or on the bed, and beat them, and they look crystal clean again. They would really last a long time when they're cared for, and they last a long time when they're not cared for, to be honest, because I know I have some that my grandparents had passed along and left outside for weeks on end, and they're still in places in my house. Maybe not as pretty as they used to be, but um, but they do wear like iron. There are hundreds of people in the United States who have made rear rugs over the years, and there are a lot of people who have one that their mother made or their grandmother made, and they don't know where to get supplies anymore. So someday, I'm hoping that there will be a resurgence, and there's no reason it won't happen again. And when it does, I'll be there.
your rugs are so warm. 